G'day ladies and gents and welcome to a bit of a mix video this one. This is both a mini vlog and my first battle in the BF 109 E4, the new E4 that's been added to War Thunder and what a fantastic plane this is. I'm looking forward to talking more about it in the future. So why only a mini vlog? Well the truth of the matter is I've actually been unable to make videos for the last couple of days. I've been busy with some real world stuff so there's going to be a small gap in the middle and I wanted to do a vlog now to remind everyone that at this point you only have three days as of me making this video to finalise your entries for my 30,000 subscriber competition. Now at the moment I have a massive amount of entries for the the two primary competitions for War Thunder and for DCSI IL2. Uh, that's going to take me some time to get through. I did want to put an extra piece of information in on the artwork submissions. Now, I've had some great artworks, but not as many as I thought I would for... Uh, at least not as many as I thought I would be able to use. When I put up the picture of Boomer, I wanted you to use him as inspiration, or maybe part of him somewhere in the image, but I wanted the image to be yours. Uh, the majority of the submissions that I've received at this point have been just a copy-paste of that image onto a black t-shirt with 30k subscriber entry written next to it. Sometimes there's been a little bit of extra stuff that's been added here and there, but usually not a great deal. And because this image is... well, it's in no way yours. They're sort of submissions that I can't really use. At this point, I was hoping to have 10 submissions for the art competition, at least 10 finalists. But it's looking at this time, for the sheer amount of copy-paste that have come in, that I'm probably only going to wind up with three. I've definitely had three fantastic submissions at this time. I'm hoping I'll get a few more over the next couple of days. Artwork is something that uh, doesn't just happen, and I'm expecting to actually get some more submissions in the last few days. So, fingers crossed I will, otherwise the art competition may be down to a top 3 only rather than a top 10 like I was initially hoping. Now the second question that's been coming up a bit recently is there was a great number of you that actually really enjoyed my Fallout 4 coverage and were wondering why I haven't made any more videos considering that there are other YouTubers that are much more advanced into the game at this point. And the truth of the matter is I didn't want to make any more. Now, I want to be clear, it's not that I'm not enjoying the game. Uh, Fallout 4 does have a few problems, and I'm going to do a review on it, and cover some of these problems, but overall I'm finding it to be a fantastic experience. I'm really enjoying the game. I'm especially enjoying the storyline, and that's actually part of the problem. A few things that make Fallout a real RPG have been removed in Fallout 4. It's more of a first-person shooter with RPG elements. But in its place, it has had probably one of the most compelling storylines that I've seen in Fallout since the original Fallout games. Unfortunately, the way they've changed how the game operates means that a lot of the writing is a lot tighter knit now. A lot of the characters and side characters you meet will directly refer back to the main storyline. A lot of the side quests that seem to be completely unrelated to the main storyline and in most Bethesda games would be a story unto itself and something that would be quite easy to put onto the channel winds up with heavy conversation elements that lead back again into that main storyline. A lot of events that happen in the world once you pass a particular point in the storyline again is just more feeding back into the story and this is a problem because it means short of just wandering off into the wasteland and looting there's almost no way to avoid spo uh, storyline spoilers, and I said originally, excluding the tutorial, I wanted to avoid that. I wanted to show Fallout, but I didn't want to ruin it for anybody who didn't have it, because I could see already that the storyline was excellent. It's one of the main selling points for the game. I'll just interrupt myself here for a minute, I was actually really proud of this particular manoeuvre here. The P-40 got me from underneath, I completely didn't see it coming, completely blindsided me, he's popped my cooling system and done heavy damage to my left wing, forced him to overshoot and then pulled straight back onto his 6 and begin pulling him apart slowly. Unfortunately I shoot a little poorly with the cannons here, so I have to finish him off with German MGs, which are, are not particularly great as I'm sure you're aware. Still, I was pretty happy with the performance of the E4 in this particular fight, considering it is completely stock in this battle. But anyways, as I was saying, Fallout 4, the storyline is fantastic, unfortunately it's very difficult, short of just wandering off into the wasteland and doing nothing but looting in every video that I make, of avoiding 
potential storyline spoilers. And considering that the storyline really is the selling point of this particular game, I don't want to do that. So I'm going to hold coverage. There will be a review where I'll be talking about the game mechanics. I'll be talking about the few bugs that I encountered, and there have been a couple. I've been one of the lucky ones. I haven't had anything too game-breaking come my way. But there have definitely been a couple of bugs that have affected performance that are worth talking about. So, expect a Fallout 4 review on the channel soon enough, and maybe in a month, maybe two months, I might show a few more of my experiences within Fallout 4. Um, I may even do a more refined character or a particular character build and put that up on channel as something that's a little bit interesting, or at least something a little bit different than planes that I always have on the channel. I might also actually cover a few of the mods that come out. By that point, I would expect that the modding community would really be in full gear on this particular game, and I'm expecting great things. I mean, some of the mods for Skyrim were absolutely fantastic, so I might cover some of those as well. Next up, of course, will be the Star Wars Battlefront. I, most of you are aware I did a first impressions video on Star Wars Battlefront and my opinions on it. He finally went down, this little mongrel. Anyways, yeah, I did a first impressions on the Star Wars Battlefront beta when it first came out, and despite a lot of the negative opinions that people have on the game, I really did enjoy playing it. However, I have not purchased the full game. The main reason I haven't purchased the full game at this time is that it's currently not available in any of the stores that I live near in retail. A shipment order or something messed up, and they don't have any of, any of the physical copies of the game available. Well, what about the digital copies? Well, here's the problem with living in Australia. We really don't have a big enough market for most digital stores to bother converting to our currency. So we get the price in US dollars. And currently, the standard edition of Battlefront is going on Origin for $89.99 in US. However, you've got to take into account the currency conversion. $89.99 US dollars currently converts to the Australian dollar at $124.34 for the standard edition of Star Wars Battlefront. To give you a comparison here, Fallout 4 out of one of the stores, JB Hi-Fi, here in Australia, was available for $59. I don't care how much I enjoyed Star Wars Battlefront, I'm not paying nearly 130 bucks for it. And this is actually a common problem when purchasing games within Australia. Because we don't get converted or any currency conversions taken into account on the majority of our storefronts, including Steam, Another perfect example was GTA 5. GTA 5 converted in at about 130 bucks to purchase it off Steam, and I picked it up for under 60 out of the stores here in Australia. It is still cheaper to buy physical copies in Australia than it is to buy the digital copies, even with all of the import taxes on them, all of the costs of actually printing a physical disc and making a box for it, and all the cover art and all the bullshit that comes around making a physical copy. It is still today cheaper to buy the physical copy in Australia than it is to actually buy the digital copy, which is ludicrous. Now, if the cost difference was only a little bit, it wouldn't matter too much. The convenience of purchasing online would overall all. But Star Wars Battlefront's going to land in my local stores when they get their shipment organised, which should take about two to three weeks for about 68 bucks. That's half the cost of buying it online, and the bonus for it is that at least 80% of the game is actually going to be on that disc. So I'm only going to have to download 20% of it through my crappy Australian internet. You know, just thinking about it, I may actually do a video on this particular problem with Australian gaming at some point in the future, and actually show you some examples of exactly how much more it costs to buy games online, as opposed to actually buying them out of a store in Australia. How a medium that should theoretically be cheaper because there is no physical product to produce, there's no transport of that product, there is no taxes on that product, there is no physical store you've got to put it into, there is nothing. A digital copy should always wind out substantially cheaper than the cost of a physical copy. And yet in Australia it is literally half the price to buy out of the store than it is to buy the digital copy that's always available online. So, at this point anyway, there won't be any Star Wars Battlefront coverage up on the channel, and honestly, I'm not entirely sure how long it'll be until I pick it up. I really did enjoy the game, and I'm going to get it at some point. I'm not entirely sure how heavily I would cover it anyway, so there would probably only be one or two videos, and I can fill those one or two videos in with other content. Actually, that's something I want to put in for the very end of this video. Drop a game name in the list below on things that you would like to see me cover on the channel. I'm actually not looking to add any additional new content to the channel at this time, but I would be really curious about the kind of things that you would actually like to see me play. Anyways, until then, just a reminder again, contest submissions end on the 26th, that's three days from now. Once that date has passed, I will be accepting no further applications. 
Until next time, guys, click like if you do, subscribe if you want to see more. Fly smart, fly safe, and I'll catch you in the skies.